Hello. Welcome to the Learn the Tree Book Club. I'm uh, Meredith McGee here in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Okay, here. Welcome to the Learn the Tree Book Club. Hola, welcome spring. My name is Salma Yusuf and I'm in first grade. I'm going to be reading Hola, welcome to Winter is over, which means just one thing, a new season coming. Coming. It's some, I mean, spring. Did you know? Did you both know that spring brings new friends? Like grandmas, those are those are creatures with soft, fuzzy ears and. These are pretty plants. Plants is sweet smelling and green. You call this a black ha 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 choo. Hey, have you seen this green stuff on the ground? It tickles when I spin around and around. Here is... Here is... This here is... Andrew. He is a spring bunny. He hops to find places that are warm and safe. I love the new plants and my fuzzy friends too. But mostly, I love sharing school time with you. E.M. Okay. So uh, give us a, a, a summary of your a book, uh, Salomar. So it's about fuzzy animals in the Spring. Uh, name some of the animals. A rabbit, a llama, and a duck. <laughs> okay, well, very good. I enjoyed the story. Okay, anybody else have another question? Okay, Miriam, you can read. My name is Marilyn Yusuf. I'm in fourth grade. Okay, today I'm going to be reading Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. All right. <laughs> 
A told B and B told C. I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. Hello? Hey, Vicky G. Uh, uh, Mary Ann is reading now. Welcome. Okay. I can't see anybody. Can you see me? Can you hear me? We can hear you, but we can't see you. It, okay. How do I open my video? It says uh, I got my... Okay, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Turn on your video. That's what I'm trying to see. Cause it says my video is stopped. So I don't know how to, I don't, I don't. Just hit start the green button. Okay, Mary, I'm sorry about that. You go ahead and uh, read. Okay. We said D to EFG. I'll meet. I'll beat you at the top of the coconut tree. Chicka chicka. Will there be? Will there be enough room? Here come H, up the coconut tree. And I and J and tug, tag along K, all on their way up the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom. Will, will there be enough room? Look who's coming. L M N O P. And Q R S and T V. Still more, W and X, Y, Z. The whole alphabet up the, uh-oh. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. Excuse me, can anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I can see. I can see everybody. Can everybody see and hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, everybody, that I'm late, but I'm here now, so. Okay. Who's there? 
squirrel don't get swept free, everybody running to the coconut tree. Mamas and papas and uncles and aunts hug their little dears, then dust their pants. Help us up, cried ABC. Next, from the piled up skinned B D and stubbed toed E and patched up F, then comes G, all out of breath. H is tangled up with I. J and K are about to cry. L is not. M is linked. M is stooped. O is twisted. Alley loop. Get scat squirrel dot fit flat flea. Look who's coming, it's black, black eyed pink, Q R S and loose tooth T. Then U V W wiggle jiggle free. Last tick on X Y Z and the sun goes down on the coconut tree. But chicka chicka boom boom. Look, there's a full moon. A is out of bed, and this is what he said. Dare double dare, you can't catch me. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka chicka boom boom. I'm sorry, Mary Ann, <laughs> can you give us a summary of the book of Chicka Chicka Boom Boom and welcome to all. Janice, it's good to see you. You too. Hello all. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Janice. Can you see me? <laughs> Hello, yes. I see you clearly, Miss Jenkins. <laughs> all right. <laughs> good to see everybody. Yes, yes. Good to see you. Okay, so Mary, give us a summary of uh, Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. Okay, it's like the alphabet's trying to climb up the coconut tree. They're trying to, like, win to get to the top of the coconut tree. Oh, wow, well, who won? Hey. Oh, really? <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> so, A won. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so, Harry, you... What you got? What you read today? Thank you, Mary Ann. It's your chicken pox. It's your it's chicken pox. All right. A spot, a spot, another spot. Uh oh, chicken pox. Uh 
Under my shirt, under my socks, itchy, itchy chicken pox. Don't rub, don't scratch. Oh, no, another batch. No, oh, wow. On my tummy, between my toes, down my back, on my nose. <laughs> Motion on, it she's gone for now, just for now. It comes back, ow. One and two and three and four, five and six and more and more. Daddy counts my itchy spots, lots and lots of chicken pox. Itchy, itchy, I feel twitchy. I run away, the itching stains. Rubber ducky doesn't like a monkey. Rubber ducky does does like the mama said it's good for me. I rest, I read, I eat, I play. I feel better every day. And then, no new spots, hooray! Okay, I'm okay. I get to go to school today. The end. Very good. So I have one question. Harry, have you ever had the chicken pox? No, ma'am. Oh, wow. I had it so That's long ago, I don't even remember the experience. <laughs> I might have been eight or nine years old. Anybody on here ever had the chicken pox? I had yes, the I had back in the, I didn't have the measles. I didn't have the chicken pox. I had the measles. Ah, uh, wow. I had so chicken pox when I was <laughs> school. Yeah. What, Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> chicken pox. Uh -huh. Yes, when I was out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's what you had to take the vaccine before you started school. So I had to take all the vaccinations. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. That's it, you know, never ever had yeah. it before. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. glad y'all had it. I don't wish it on nobody. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh -huh. <laughs> it definitely was itching. It definitely felt bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm comfortable. Well, um, when Harry was reading, he was sounding like he had had chicken pox. <laughs> he put so much emphasis on the pain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> He's just a good reader. <laughs> Okay, yes. so, uh, uh, Vicky, are you reading next? I guess so. I guess I'm reading Mother Wit. <laughs> okay, okay. Mother Wit says, marriage is sacred. Of marriage is a religion rather than worldly. Acquiring a wife, wife, husband, 
is precious similar similar milestone. In a fairy tale, the king and queen are loved throughout the land by the citizens and by their royal subjects in the family. And the home, the man is the top of the house. Mm. And the woman is beside. <laughs> God sits at, on his throne above all the men and all the women. As the family reproduces and adds new offspring, it is the responsibility of the parent leaders to put bacon on the table, to cook the bacon, maintain shelter for the family, provide clothes for the children, provide clothes for the children, let toddlers to educate and teach reading and educate and teach the children from right and from wrong and to make influences and in, in, uh, unity in the family. The, the uh, parent leaders are the peacemakers and then in, in the negotiators, the resolvers, the counselors, the guardians and the cornerstone of family life. It is a plan to be, it is wise to, to be planned, to get a, to plan a marriage of life before the wedding. If you want to ride the terms of the marriage, do what they, um, do what the Bible says, if you're married, be mindful. Oh, wise tale. Two is better than one. It is good on a, it's good to be, it's good to be one, but it's better to be two. Life is better with friends. Life is amazing with a loving and devoted mate who will be there through times and bad times. Good health, poor health, and finance and financial times, hard financial times. Marriage is forever and forever as, as a long time. Forever is till the death do us part. The rules of marriages are listed in the Bible. I am not a preacher. I am a Christian of belief. I can tell you what I know. I know God is the key to loyalty, happiness. Happiness is the key to faithfulness. Faithfulness is the key to the USA, which is the capitalistic country financial and key, which comes with the lyrics of Gwen Guthrie's song. Ain't nothing going on but the rent. I had to think hard for the next verse. You need a J-O-B if you want to be with me. My grandchildren told told me in Memphis, Tennessee, a rapper named Yo Gotti has a lyric which says in part, being broke is not against the law. Let me tell you, I wish being broke was against the law, but being broke or wealthy should not determine a person's worth and family. Society frowns upon poverty and embraces wealth. Let's lift family. If we can sometimes, sometimes Harry needs an extra push in the back rather than the kick in the butt. It is never nice to kick a man when he's down. 
a man should take care of home first. It is, it is okay to work hard. It is okay to work smart. Society places a great deal of importance on money and status, or the lack of. But remember, marriage is absolute sticking together, and we should work and should weather, weather storms. Families should, families should stick together, one on the hand and one on the, on the shoulder to put in fair due. It is the lyrics of the old blues in the song, put it this way. Love is the one you're with. Sometimes blood is thicker than water and sometimes a friend is closer than a brother. When it comes to a friend, when it comes to family and family, what you should see when you walk in the morning and look around. Sometimes family is what you see when you wake up in the recovery room or what you see when you have walked into the longest walk, what you have ever, and you see when you're walking this walk, whatever you have walked and what is earthly belonging to what has been reduced to a box. Family are those people who make conscious decisions to help another human being. And remember, family will come, people will go because it is truly a reason for everything, it's truly a season for everything. Always say, Mama used to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what my, you know, Mama used to say it. Yeah. Consider the following questions in your planning process. Will you have a big wedding? Will you have a small wedding, a garden wedding? Will you keep a house budget? Will you have a reception? Will you buy a home? Will you buy an old home and fix it up? Will you invite foreclosed cheaper property? Will you invest in foreclosed cheaper property? Will you have 15 year mortgage? Will you have a 30 year mortgage? Will you live in the inner city? Will you live in the suburbs? or will you live in the countryside? Will you drive in luxury cars? Will you drive in hybrid cars and obtain a 45 miles per hour? Getting married usually improves couple financial life. Extremely divorced, divorce is usually hurts financials. It is not just the couple living together and sharing expenses, but it is easier for two to build wealth. Wealth is ownership, and it's usually easier for couples to pay off the mortgage loans and save up money. To save up money for cash for goods and services. It for single parents. It is, it is, since you are getting married for the first time, you should open your mind and your heart and your soul. Most of all, it is important to you to be, once you have faith in your marriage, it is important for each man to support the other spouse and to please their mate, to go to everything with them, with their reason to encourage the other to love one another and to praise one another. Relationships work when two people have the same intentions, growing together, having a tender heart, becoming increasingly rare these days, having a tender heart is increasingly rare these days. 
but we all have good reasons to be kind and show compassion to one another. It is wise to have patience, be gentle for forgiving gracious, for forgiving gracious. People should have one another, treat one another with respect. Real love is healthy when it dwells on a two-way street. Both adults have the belief for reciprocal love. Love is honest and gentle and doesn't seek to hurt or to cause pain. When I was young, old folks called couples who were going through hard and were going through new love and um, love, they're going through new love and love bugs at the stage of um, woman desire to be <laughs> with another person all the time. During this period, couples overlook each other, overlook each other's flaws. A time passes, the love nest lo lo loosens. And time, let me see what, and love net uh, loosens, but in time, there is an inspiration. It is past this couple find it's hard to have lasting relationship with someone, even though they take every effort to be, to bring sunshine, if you weather the storm every effort to bring sunshine if you weather the storm. Okay, Vic. So I guess uh, you could you could get to a stop point so we can ask you some questions. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, uh, that, uh, that was interesting. It's, it's, um, Ms. Irma's book, I hadn't read in, in, in a, a few months. But anyway, what shows summary of uh, her first few pages of her book Motherhood. What she says is that the institution of marriage is sacred and it is requiring a man and a husband to be precious, to have a precious mm -hmm. milestone. True that. It is to have respect for each other. Man is at the top of the family and the woman is beside him. So the man runs the household, as they say. And the woman, is, and the, and the woman runs the family. <laughs> but God is the head of, God is the head of all, God is the head of the throne. And that is what God is the head of everything. And like she was saying about financial problems, when it comes to the comes to the financial difficulties in marriages. And like she was saying, that song says, and hey, hey, nothing going on but the rent. You got to handle the money in the pockets. <laughs> and if you want to add, you need to have a J-O-B if you want to be with me. <laughs> that song from the 1970s. <laughs> yeah, what but it's, it's got a message. I mean, but it's a that song from the 1970s. Yeah, ain't nothing going on but the rent. <laughs> you got to have a J-O-B <laughs> if you want to be with me. <laughs> and also, too, they were saying this, that is a, uh, a rap says, being poor is not, let me see what it says, it's not a sin. Now, he, he's, he's, yo, God has said that it ought to be against a, a law against what? Well, well, that's that being said. Yeah, that's what not saying. saying, but it's against the law. It's against the law to be um, poor is not being it's not a sin, but it's against the law to be poor. Yeah, that's what he's saying in the song. His yeah. song says uh, it it ought to be a law against being broke. 
as, as she was saying that being broke or not should not have anything to do with marriage because the marriage the married couple should sit by each other in yeah. good times and in bad times. Bad times. To get here. And that's what it says specifically. What uh, you know, those of you who have marital vows that says through good times. I will be with you through thick and thin, good times and bad times, and stay together until the end through, until death do us part. Amen. Um, anybody have any other questions to ask Vicki or comment? I was thinking as you were reading Vicki, about one of the comments in terms of the adult. I'm, I'm kind of confused about the adult within the marriage, the two people being adults. Is your book that you're reading from designed for a particular populace in terms of the age bracket? Well, it did not give any kind of age bracket in the adult part of the of the um, of what they were talking about marriage, there was no age bracket in that was listed, and the uh, uh, adults was talking about geared toward the children. You are to be the leader of the children, to teach right from wrong. You have to be the leader of the children to lead the children, take care of the children. And it's your responsibility, as they say, to put the bacon on the table, also to cook the bacon. It is the, it is the woman's or wife's responsibility, as according to Ms. Wood says. That is her responsibility. To, to clothe the children, to lead the children, to guide the children from in a right and wrong. That is what the uh, what the adult says, the wife and the, and the husband. There is no time limit or time image as to what the uh, marriage time is to say that, you know, married between 20, 20 years old and 30 years old. There is no time frame in that. Thank you. Now I can see the essence of the mother wit announcement regarding what you were reading. My mind was going on the age contest, the age context and the idea of youth as the Bible talks about youth and uh, Youth being, that was a, a term I was reading, I think it was in Ecclesiastes about youth, that youth is fantasy. That's what it was saying, youth is fantasy in light of one growing up. So as one is growing up and one becomes mature, then the things that were done during, during the youthful years, perhaps the foolish things that were done are done no more when one becomes an adult. When I was a child, I speak as a child, the Apostle Paul okay. speaking. Yeah. Yeah. So now I understand what the author was saying regarding that title, Mother Wit, because that word is so important in terms of wisdom, yes. growth, coming into wisdom. Thank and you so much for your clarification. Okay. Um, so last week, uh, I started reading uh, Malcolm Little by his uh, daughter, uh, Elisa Shabazz. And I uh, um, Janice, none of the children have ever heard of Malcolm X. So I decided I'm going to keep reading this book until I finish it, since it was introducing the book club members to someone uh, who was so very important in our uh, Black history. So in a way, uh, it was uh, 
I stopped last month on page. I don't know what page this is, but anyway, uh, this is, I believe this is an image of uh, Malcolm Little when he was young and his mother. You are and, good enough. Yeah. Huh? I was just reading, um, huh? one, of, one, one of the signs that she has in her book was say, you are good enough. I was just going through the books and what pictures that she has, and it says, you are good enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to start, start reading. And just as Malcolm found inspiration from his father's speeches at church, he learned some unexpected lessons from his mother's garden at home. For Malcolm, the enchanted garden of Louise Norton Little was an entire world of his own, where even the most sluggish of ladybugs and the fastest Korean ants were all equally treated like esteemed and welcome guests at a family Sunday brunch. Here, savvy spiders busily crochet their delicate webs along the foliage, allowing the strong Midwestern sunshine to cast pretty pattern shadows on the soft earth below. Geraniums dotted the field in the distance with peppy pops of pink and purple as the crisp blue sky and lush green field connected somewhere far out in the horizon. In this sacred garden, beetles hustled about like herd businessmen on their way to important meetings while snails lulled leisurely as if they were on some half of half speed permanent vacation. <clears throat> Here Louise taught her children to love every living creature equally, large or small, pretty or ugly, busy or still, fast or slow, insect or plant. The garden was a testament. Uh oh. Get lost. Wait one second. To true and unconditional brotherhood from the earth on up to the sky. A daily lesson in acceptance and equality. Each living creature had a story, a purpose, a reason for being, and a beauty of its own. Through the majestic trees in the garden. Malcolm would also learn about the importance of roots, nature's anchors, the base of every living creature. And through the outspread wings of a chirping birds above, he began to see the power of possibility. So he, this is the, the children in the garden. Can you all see it? Yes. Okay. And all this special garden became a source of knowledge, a little fa uh, family sanctuary where lessons came each day like tiny droplets of sweet morning dew. Because Louise knew that the best way to teach her children was to give him or her a chance. She gave each of her children their very own little plot of land in the garden where they would take care of their designated areas like proud and professional many farmers. Malcolm and his siblings learned to plant, water, trim, till, and harvest the crops, which in turn planted the seeds for hard work and their seed of self-reliance with their shovels and watering, pitches in hand. They nourished their crops and care for their herbs, fruit, and vegetables as they would for any other living creature with intention 
dedication and love. Malcolm's favorite vegetable to grow was peas. He would spend hours in the garden, methodically combing through the rows of seedlings and sprouts, his little fingers digging cautiously into the warm earth, making sure there were no earthworms squirming around down there. When his mother later served the fresh peas at the dinner table, Malcolm would flash a great smile, gratified smile. Wow, because I love Mrs. Sweet Pea. Okay, and I'm going to uh, stop there and see if anybody uh, has any questions because we still have one more uh, more reader. Um, this um, Janice, and I wanted to ask uh, the children, do you all have you all ever grown anything in a in a garden or a plant at home in a pot? Oh, uh, un, uh, uh, turn on your audio so you can tell us about it. Yes, ma'am. I grew I grew corn in my front yard. Oh yeah, because I saw it. And and what else? You all grow greens too, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and then you cook it and eat. That makes it even special, huh? Came out the front yard. <laughs> okay, and what about you guys, Marianne and Solomon? Yeah, we planted apple seeds and our apple trees are beginning to grow. Oh, wow. Where did you plant your apple seed? In the front, in the front yard, yeah. Okay. Did you plant it in the ground or in a pot? In the ground. In the ground. Okay. How far did you go when you put the seed in? Um, we went too far. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, about like that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Wow. We got some many farmers in the house. <laughs> well, very good. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, Miss Janice, you 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 got something to read? Yes, I have something here called The Power of Her Pen. This is a story about Eltha L. Payne, who is a groundbreaking journalist by Lisa Klein Ransom and John Parrott. So I have just cited a few pages here. Ethel Lois Payne always had an ear for stories. Her grandparents' front porch stories of Kentucky cotton fields and Tennessee auction blocks. Her parents' kitchen table stories of northbound trains from sharecroppers' plots. Long past her bedtime, Ethel collected the stories of people who followed a path paved with dreams. Ethel spent her school days daydreaming of life far beyond her neighborhood, except when she was in English class. There, her teacher, Miss Dixon, encouraged her writing. Her mother encouraged her at home. Ethel wrote during the day, and she read her stories aloud to her family at night. The school wouldn't let a Black student work on the school newspaper. But after reading Ethel's writing, it did publish her very first story. During the Great Depression, with money even tighter than before, Ethel attended a local college with free tuition and took writing classes. As the features reporter, Ethel wrote about housing, jobs, health care, and community events. After one year, Ethel and her notebook headed to the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, where politicians debated civil rights. As more and more readers opened their newspapers to read the articles written by Ethel L. Payne, the defender's circulation grew. After three years, her editor asked, why don't you go down to Washington? Uh, 
Of the 204 reporters, Ethel was one of only three black journalists issued a White House press pass. It allowed her to sit in the treaty room of the White House where the president met with journalists. Only when the president nodded could a reporter ask a question. These experienced reporters knew how to jump to their feet, hoping their voices would be the ones to reach the president's ears. When Eisenhower left office in 1961, Ethel asked the young president, John F. Kennedy, about his civil rights voting record. When Kennedy was assassinated in 1963, she asked Lyndon Baines Johnson about the Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Act. And then she asked Richard M. Nixon questions about the lack of Blacks in his administration, and Jimmy Carter, questions on education. Ethel spent so much time in the White House, she earned the title First Lady of the Black Press. Always with an ear for stories, Ethel asked the questions and demanded the answers for people whose paths were paved with dreams. I've had a box seat on history, Ethel once said, and that's a rare thing. Again, this was a story about journalist Ethel L. Payne. The Power of Her Pen, Lisa Klein, Ransom, and John Power are the authors. So well, we can see, uh -huh. yes, the black lady, Ethel L. Payne. Well, I, that was interesting. I'm, I'm just uh, honored to learn about her because, you know, the Chicago Defender was one of our biggest voices for, for a long time, and I had never heard of her. Uh, this uh, Ethel uh, a pain, but I wanted to ask the children: Are any of you interested in writing for a newspaper or a book when you grow up, like Miss Ethel? I'm unmuted so you can tell us. Yeah, I want to be a writer when I grow up. I started right. writing a book, but then uh, I lost it somewhere. Very good. Do you have any questions to ask Ms. Janice about Ethel Payne? Well, I, I want to say here, look around you. <laughs> look around you, look at the people in terms of the local newspapers you may find in your home or look at the television and you'll be seeing the media persons, persons telling the news, someone in your neighborhood, you can probably reach out to. You can write that person a letter. Since we're in this pandemic, you can shoot that person an email. You can call if you get the telephone number, for instance, of the television station, the radio station, the newspaper whatever the case may be, for you to have some immediacy, some immediate access to that person. And that person can become your mentor if he or she is not already your mentor. You know, you think so much about so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so, and you would like the opportunity to get to know Oprah Winfrey or whoever, the person may be. So this would be a good opportunity for you to reach out and you never know where you will end up. I promise you, you will never know until you get there. So you're at the right ages now to do what I'm saying. 
you'll be surprised to know how many people there are out there who are writing and reporting who would be happy to take you under their wings and watch you grow down through the years. They are all around you. So all you have to do is open up your eyes and really look, be in conversation with adults, be in conversation with your parents, your grandparents, your friends, relatives, whoever they may be, your teachers can even help you a great deal in what I'm talking about, especially the English teachers and those who are in journalism or media, mass communications would be a familiar name for what I'm talking about, but they are around you and they are busy but when they see the young people wanting to latch on to them, many of them will pause and make a welcome statement to you. So that's my advice to you. I believe you will be very, very successful if you take advantage of what I'm saying. I also write for a newspaper. I mean, there are just so many people around you. <laughs> Yes, they are. And um, and I want to invite you to, to have you ever written a poem? Anyway, uh, I want to invite you to write a poem for the poetry contest, which will be the Saturday. And I sent you in the uh chat the information. It will be the Saturday after Thanksgiving, I think November 27th this year. And also. Uh, yes, you are around a lot of writers. I'm I'm a writer, um, a book publisher. And when you write anything, send me an email and let's see if we can get it, get it uh, published. I can talk to you and your, your uh, parents. Uh, Miss Janice is a, a poet and, and an author and also a playwright. Uh, uh, so you're around a lot of people in, in the arts. And I'm, I'm so happy to know that you want to be a writer because you read and, and you're gonna have a lot of story, stories to tell and to write about. And you at a great age, just keep writing and keep up with it. Buy you a pad, keep all your uh, words or writings in that one uh, tablet. You have any other questions? Uh, you have any questions, Mary Ann? Any, any, any questions you wanna know about how you get started writing or anything? She needs to unmute. I'm unmuted. I'm okay, I think I need a question. I have a question on how to start a book or what title should I go for? Okay, so uh, are you going? Are you trying to do like a picture book, like the one you just did, uh, a chicka chicka boom boom? Or are you trying to do a story book? Storybook. Okay, so a storybook is a chapter book. Is that that's what you mean? I, I saw, saw a book for uh, what grade are you in? Uh, You're the fourth grade or fifth? Yeah, I'm fourth. And you read chapter books, right? Yep. So you're trying to read a uh, write a book. For someone your age, which is which will be at least three chapters. Now, um, you remember I sent you a uh, a Nishida book is in chapters. Do you have one of the Nishida books? Either what books? Well, see, like the book you just read is a is a story, a picture story book. It's not in chapters. Uh, but it's a oh. illustrated storybook. Which are you trying to write, write that kind of book or a chapter book? Storybook, like chicken, chicken, 
Oh, that's that story and pictures. Okay, so uh, for a story, an illustrated storybook, you would need about at least 16 pages, and you would have, you see how the storybook was? You have one or two sentences on each page, and then each page has this illustration. That's a picture book, a, a picture storybook. And that's a great place to start in terms of your writing and your age. So that's, is that, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's all the questions I have right now. Huh? That's all the questions that I have right now. Okay, then you can worry about the name. Uh, once you get it all together, the name will come to you. Okay. Okay, and now uh, I want you to uh, uh, email me your address. I could not find your address. We did not forget about your uh, birthday book as a book club member. I couldn't find your address. So uh, email me your address so we can, uh, the book club can send you your um, uh, book gift for your birthday. And anyone, uh, any of the members that have a birthday coming up, let us know so we can send you a book for your birthday. Yeah. I, I Did you see my uh, email? It doesn't matter. You can send the community library or that one, either one. It's, uh, so we can have your uh, mailing address again. I'm sorry I misplaced it. Okay, so uh, we have about uh, 20 more minutes and uh, I'm gonna read uh, another page of, uh, of my book and then anybody else that, that wants to, to read after that is, is free to read. And I'm gonna read the next page of uh, Malcolm Little is a story about the childhood of Malcolm X, written by his daughter. Okay. Who was his mother? I always found the time to instill lessons of good morals and values, even while she was ironing, washing, cooking, and fussing over all seven of her children. While folding fresh laundry, Louise would also unfold a newspaper from another country for, for her children to read. A window into the world and a way to connect with the rest of humanity. Brothers and sisters all across the globe. Even though the children went to school, she knew that the best education they would receive would, would begin at home. Wow! She knew that the best education they would receive would begin at home. Now that's a powerful concept. People think they gotta go to school to get education, but it begins at home. Very important. She knew, okay, let's see. Um, she knew that the best education they would receive would begin at home. And that information was one of the greatest gifts she could give her seven children. Information. She could bake biscuits while discussing philosophy, sweep the floor while reciting poetry, and teach math while pruning the garden. With one hand, she would tend to the linens, and in the other hand, she would hold an open book. And Malcolm and his siblings would listen on as she enthusiastically taught them one of the alphabets of the five different languages that she spoke fluently. Oh my God. His mother spoke five languages fluently. Malcolm especially loved the sounds of the letters in French. And hearing the alphabet intonation of this sumptuous language, words that to him always sounded like they were somewhat dressed up. But most of all, these lessons in language taught young Malcolm that there was a whole wide world far beyond his noisy chickens and green peas. Wow. This great man had a mother who 
spoke five languages. I tell you, I'm I'm enjoying learning about um the the childhood of Malcolm X. I never knew that. <laughs> Miss Janice, did you know that? No, I did not, but I, I knew from watching the movie that the mother was based on the characterization within the movie that the mother was very bright. I, I realized that when she was speaking up against the person who had come to warn her, the social worker who had come about taking the children away and the way the mother responded let me know that she did not have any fear because she had done the best she could with her children and she was very protective of them. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, anybody have any uh, 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 questions about what we just read? Anybody know any, uh, uh, any uh, other languages other than English? Okay. I'm being sure y'all can tell, oh my goodness. <laughs> Are you trying to say something like Uncle Say? <laughs> Are you trying to say something Wait like Uncle Say? Wait a second, it's going to stay. Okay, so uh, 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 y'all tell us uh, uh, what other languages you know. Okay, go. Okay, Harry, and then I'll sign my y'all don't do that to Harry and tell us. Okay, Harry. I don't know how to speak them, but I know them. English. What's French, Spanish, British, Chinese, Japanese, Australian. Oh my God, how you learn all that? What, what, so you no, I don't that? know them, but I, I don't know how to speak them, but I know them. Uh, you mean you know them when you see them? Yes, sir. And hear them? He's familiar. Wow. And who taught you those languages? I learned. Very good. Okay. Very oh my. Yes, very, very bright. <laughs> okay, so Solomon and uh, Miriam, what languages do you all know? Okay. My parents are from Nigeria and they speak a language called Yoruba. I can understand them, but I can only speak a little bit. Oh, very good. Oh my God, I'm so honored to be around all these brainy people. <laughs> wow. Speak <laughs> all these we have some geniuses here. <laughs> yeah. Didn't even know it. <laughs> wow. Then it's writers and everything. Wow. Greatness in the making. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. And when you and when you start your book, you can say some of those things in Yoruba that you hear your parents say. Yeah. That would be really good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, yeah. so uh, uh man, I'm I'm just uh, I'm just a uh, loss for words. <laughs> <It'll> <laughs> Anybody want to read? Teaching moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anybody want have uh, want to read something? We got a few minutes left. Everything else they want to read from. I got you now. Je peux dire en français. <laughs> what that mean, Vicky? <laughs> what? <laughs> what that mean, Vicky? <laughs> it means. <laughs> I read a little in French. Oh, wow. You read a little in French. Your mother was a school teacher she taught you French. French. No, no, Calaratia. Calaratia. That's Cal what my sister said. She was taking French when we were children. I forgot oh. what it means. It's been so long. But that's the only thing I remember. <laughs> from what she was saying, Calaratia. I think it means what time is it? Calaratia. Yeah, Calaratia. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna read this one page from this book that that a child wrote, and then um, 
Um, let's see. The name of the book is Stop COVID. And uh, they drew the pictures. I, I'm guessing this was the daughter and the mother. Can you see it? One day, children couldn't even attend school anymore. This was all because of the deadly virus that swept the nation. Some said it was just a severe case of panania uh, or just a phenomenon. People are dying in dramatic numbers. Students all over the U.S. miss their teachers, friends, learning lunch and even recess. With the virus escalating, people rushed to the store in order to buy up all the necessary essentials. Almost everyone was panicking and some were literally fighting over products. People really believed that they were having to fight for survival. A stay at home order was put in place to keep people in the house. Highways were empty and for a few people, things were eerily quiet. So, um, uh, so Mary Ann, you see this? This is the, this is a, a picture storybook. This is the illustration of what was written on one side. You could do it this way, or you could have the words at the bottom and the picture at the top. You ready to start writing? <laughs> so I'm gonna stop there. I just, I just, I just saw the opportunity to share that with, uh, with this up and coming writer named Mary Ann in Tennessee. <laughs> And don't forget to um, email me your, your address so we can send the, the book because I forget to. Do uh, you see the book? I mean, my ad, my email in the chat. Can you get it out the chat? Okay, you guys. So I guess, uh, man, this has been a, a fabulous meeting. And so um, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, next month. And uh, Anybody having the, uh, did you get the email out of that, Mary Ann? Okay, very good. Just send me the uh, email address. And yeah, I'll uh, email you after the Zoom. Okay, thanks. All right. All right, so, that, I got you now. Au revoir. <laughs> what does that mean? Au revoir, à bientôt, c'est octobre. What does that mean, Vicky? I will see this you. Will be goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. See you in October. Oh yeah, now tell me. Now say say goodbye. Just one word. See if I you can teach me one word. Say good. This is French. Say goodbye in French. Au revoir. What? Let me see uh, how to say goodbye. Uh, 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 uh. Sans demain. Good day. Son de man. So de man. Yeah. That's that's good day in French. Hey, Eric, can yeah. you help us out? What's good day <laughs> in French? <laughs> it says, in essence, it says good day. Now, Harry, do you not say goodbye in French? Okay. Me either. Anyway, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna work on it. <laughs> I only know how to say hello. You do tell me how to say hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. I did learn that when I was a child. Bonjour. Come on, tell it who. Yes. Hello. Hello. How are you? Say, bonjour. Come on, tell it who. I bet you, Harry. You said bonjour. Bonjour. What now? Say bonjour. Bonsoir. Okay. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Come on, ça va. <laughs> bon thank you. Thank you. It's always good to learn. <laughs> That's why okay. I say I'm about to teach you a little, Harry. Uh-huh. Oh, 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 sure. <laughs> Next time, we got to learn how to say good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys later. Have a wonderful Saturday. You too. You good too. to see you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>